Hi, this is Gail from Pretty Enough Naperville, and today we are going to do some special embroidered patches, and we're also going to learn how to use some of the tools on our embroidery machine to line up little embroidery designs that coordinate with your main embroidery designs in order to create a totally awesome, sophisticated looking quilt for people of all ages. This might be a little cutesy for some of you out there, but this is going on my bed. <laughs> anyway, so today we're gonna learn how to place a smaller embroidery design right in our crazy patches. Um, that happens before it's quilted. Then we're also gonna learn how to create the 3D embroideries so that you can add these onto your quilt blocks after they're quilted. So, let's get started. So now we have done our um, embellishment and we are ready to start thinking about some other ways that we can embellish our blocks. So I wanted to show you a couple of finished quilted pieces. So this quilt block, as you can see here, is one of our pieces. Um, the quilting's all been done, so that might give you a little preview of what we're gonna do in the next session. But what I wanted to show you here is this little moth. So this moth is part of the Whimsical Collection, but what I did is I actually stitched this as a patch. And the reason why I did that is I wanted to add like a layer of um, dimension to this quilt, but not so much that it overpowers it. So I wanna stitch a few more patches to go on some of my other blocks. Another thing that I wanted to point out to you is on my blocks when I made them, there were some areas where I just thought it could use a little bit more embroidery. And there are so many other cute designs on this, um, in this design collection than just the eight that we stitched out for the center of our blocks. So I also wanted to show you how we can take one of our pieced blocks and hoop it up in the hoop by floating it, that's actually a technique, and then adding the pieces using virtual positioning and pinpoint placement. And then once we do that, in the next session, we'll be ready to quilt. So for our first little embellishment, I have my smallest hoop on here with two layers of aqua mesh. And aqua mesh is actually a water soluble product. And I'm just gonna leave this right down in here and I'm gonna thread up. This is a six color design. So um, it's gonna just be uh, about less than a minute to actually stitch this out. So I just wanted to show you here, I have my multiple spool holder on the back of my machine. And this is really nice when I work with a lot of different material or a lot of different threads because I can keep them off my table. Um, but I've just threaded uh, color number one up. This is gonna be an off-white color.
So here's our cute little piece. Now, the one thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pop this out of the hoop. And I'm not even gonna worry too much about this stabilizer that's back there because um, I can trim it off. And, uh, but I'm not gonna bother washing it because really all I'm gonna do is trim off all of my fabric really close to the edge like this. And yes, there's gonna be a little bit of fraying, but I'm totally okay with that. I'm gonna go around this with a little zigzag stitch at the sewing machine and I've got a blush pink that really matches this material. So I'm gonna just do a little zigzag around that, hold it all together, and then this is gonna get lightly stitched down to one of my crazy quilt blocks. So I'm gonna make a ton of these and then I'm going to um, put them on my blocks once I complete the quilting on each block. But the next step is something that you're gonna do before you do your quilting, and that's embroidering in one of the crazy quilt shapes and fitting a sh one of our embroidery designs into that shape. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so what I'm gonna do with our next block is I wanna add this cute little ice cream cone to it and I have the perfect spot to put it. It's gonna go right here, but the ice cream cone is a little bit too large based on the measurements of the embroidery design. So first we're gonna reduce it by about 20% and then I'm gonna show you how you can just check out and see where it's gonna go here on the material. Oh, look at that ice cream cone. Isn't it cute? Well, we're gonna make it a little smaller, so that means I'm gonna go in here to my eye and I'm gonna pick the reduce icon. That's the one with the uh, big square that's reducing down to a little square. And I told you that I want you to do this to 20% smaller, so that would be 80% of the original size. So let's just keep turning this top knob counterclockwise until we get to 80. There it is. Okay, now, now, hey, I am not gonna joke. I really like pinpoint placement, which is that icon right there, but not everybody has it. So let me just show you a little bit how I would put this in with virtual positioning. So it starts by me just touching the tip of my ice cream cone right there. And now I'm gonna use my knobs to activate moving my ice cream cone to kind of go sort of kind of where I would like it to go based on my square down here on my quilt. So my ice cream cone is vertical up and down and right now this is about where the point's gonna be. That's a little bit lower than I'd like it. So now I'm gonna use my bottom knob to go up a little taller on my ice cream cone. I think I'd like it to start there. But now I wanna see where the very tip of my ice cream cone is gonna stitch. So now I'm gonna to touch my ice cream cone right at the top. And Houston, we have an issue. The ice cream cone tip, I do not want it stitching outside of my little grid material here. So let's just see what happens now. So I'm gonna turn my ice cream cone down. Okay. That's fine if it starts there. Now let's see, I'm touching that tip again. All right, well, it's still in my field, inter, field of interest here. I think I'm gonna make the ice cream cone just a little bit smaller. I'm at 70% now. So I'm touching the top of the ice cream cone. All right, let's, let's move it up a little. Okay, now I'm gonna touch the tip of the ice cream cone again. All right, I think I like it. I'm ready to stitch it. But, ladies and gentlemen, I wanna talk a little bit about pinpoint placement. Now, if I open up pinpoint placement, I can put a grid around my ice cream cone. And the reason why I wanna do this is because I wanna make sure that it's parallel to my side seam. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just touch on that corner of my ice cream cone. And I'm totally fine with where everything has stitched out. Now, the next thing is I'm gonna to touch is this button right here. So I'm happy with where this is, so I'm gonna just say set. Now, 
I want to show you where this is on, on my material, but notice I'm going to touch this button. So when you hear that sound, this is the button I'm touching. Okay, now it's not quite the same distance from the top. So I am gonna turn this. So I have to turn this slightly cockeyed so that it will stitch just so. And now I'm gonna hit set. And you can see here on my screen that the ice cream cone is at a slight angle. And that's the benefit of pinpoint placement because I don't need to hoop things perfectly straight. But now that I'm ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and hit X out of this screen and hit my stitching button. It reduces the ice cream cone. And now I'm gonna thread up my five different colors and stitch this out. I'm just kind of smoothing it out. There we go. You know, sometimes, you know, I should have probably known better than doing that, but at least you get to see why you really want to do this. Because I think even the camera picked up my little, my little puckers there. But, you know, here's another thing. It will quilt out. I'm sure you've heard that expression, but in this case, if we do a lot of quilting on this, it will quilt out. All right, let's resume our color number, our little peach color, and I'm just gonna use my broken thread button, and I'm gonna scroll ahead until I get to where I left off. There we go, I'm happy with that. So now I'm just gonna start again and life will be wonderful. learned how to make your patches and your extra embroidery pieces, guess what? Next week, we're quilting and we are going to learn a lot about free motion quilting. I'm going to take you through all the steps of stippling. I'm going to show you some alternatives to stippling and other free motion ideas to embellish all of your blocks. So, Dust off your Bernina stitch regulator because you're going to need it. And if you don't have a stitch regulator, well, you might want to get one. And if that's not possible, hey, we can still do this with a darning foot. But in the meantime, stitch out your embellishments and I'll see you next time. And if you want to see more videos just like this one, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, 
comment, and subscribe. And if you want an alert every time we upload a video just like this one, don't forget to hit the little bell. But in the meantime, get to work.